then? Day of, uh, day of Monday. But how come then? How come Yom al Jum'ah is then more honorable? Yeah, day of birth of Adam, more honorable. It's more glorified. And there are special ibadahs in Yom al Jum'ah. There are no special ibadahs in Yom al Ithnayn. When, first of all, Eid, Eid and glorification of any day is really relative in the sense of what? Number one, of course, there are special days and special times where things are glorified. But really, any day you do not disobey Allah in it is a Eid for you. A day, any time, you do not violate the cause that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amended it on you, this is a Eid for you. The Eid is not a day where you dress good and you put your thing, your good smells on and you walk. Huh? The poet says, لَيْسَ الْعِيدْ لِمَنْ لَبِسَ الْجَدِيدِ إِنَّمَا الْعِيدْ لِمَنْ طَاعَتُهُ تَزِيدِ The Eid is not for those who wear new things, but the Eid is for those who their worship increases. This becomes a Eid for you then. Every day can become a Eid for you if you worship Allah more in that, in that day. And why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made special more prayers, additional prayers, and a ghusl, and this in Yom al-Jum'ah did not make it in Monday? Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a mercy. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to lighten the load on the ummah, not to increase the load on the ummah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He came as a mercy, he came for takhfif, to make it easier for you to reach. To make it easier for you to make your worship. So instead of 50 prayers, you are making only 5. But you get the rewards of 50. And instead of making too many, huh, too many things, then you only make one. And Allah will give you the reward. Though for the people of Mahabba, for the people of Mahabba, and for the people of Qulub, and for the people of transparency, in their relationship with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there is a ibadah that you do every day the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born. Every mawlid, every Monday, you fast. Well, hadith is Sahih Muslim. In Sahih Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ was asked, Why, Ya Rasulullah, you fast every Monday? He said, This is a day I was born in. Giving you a hint for those who want to do the extra. That if you want to do the extra, then you fast. You follow his sunnah. You fast that every Monday out of glorifying his day of birth. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Of course, now. There are differences among the scholars. When was he born? Was he born in Muharram? Some people said he was born in Muharram. Some people said he was born in Sha'ban. Some people said he was born in Ramadan. Some people said he was born in Rajab. Some people said in the 12th of Rabi'ul Awwa. Some people said no, 7th, 8th, 17th. The ulama of Ahl Sunnah <coughs> want to say that the Sahih, the authentic, is really the birth of the Prophet ﷺ was in the month of Rabi'ul Awwal. Why? There is a fadlaka. Fadlaka means there is a no notion in here. What is that fadlaka? What is that notion? Remember that the month of Rajab, the month of Sha'ban, the month of Ramadan, the month of Muharram, were months that were already glorified in the Jahiliyyah. Yani before Islam, the people respected the month of Muharram. Month of Rajab was very respected. Huh? Rajab al-Murajab. The month of Sha'ban, etc. All these months were, months were respected and glorified, Mu'azzameen. And as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be born in a month that was not known to the people before to be glorified, so it becomes a special month that is glorified only because of him sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So that people do not think that the Prophet is glorified because he was born in Muharram or he was born in Rajab. No, 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 no. Because time and places do not Honor the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam versus the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-Nabiyyul A'zam. He is the one who honors the times and the places by his existence. Salawatu Allahi wa sallamu alayhi wa alayhi. So therefore the month of Rabi' became honored because of him. Solely for him. Salawatu Allahi wa sallamu alayhi wa alayhi. And the month of Rabi' means the month of spring. Rabi' means spring. And the spring is where the flowers bloom and blossom. And the month of Rabi' for the people of Mahabba is when their hearts blossom and bloom. 
when their hearts open up to these barakat of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the nafahat that come and the uh, all these uh, the anwar that come with the mention of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam aqul qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له رغاما لمن جحد به وكفر وأشهد أن سيدنا مولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم خاتم الأنبياء المعتبر صل اللهم وسلم وبارك على هذا النبي وعلى آله أهل الفقه والنظر والعلم والأثر وعلم بآثاره المقتفى واعتبر Of course, now going from that birth of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم and what it brought to this, Imam Qastallani, he mentions many things, many things about the birth of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he mentions that the Quran came as tafadl, bounties of Allah subhanahu wa taala on this ummah, hmm? and then, and the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam came as tafadl from Allah subhanahu wa taala on the whole creation. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil Muslimin. For the mankind, no. Al-Alamin does not mean mankind. Al-Alamin means the worlds. Jama' awalim alam. If you alam means universe, awalim means universes. And lil alameen means for the universes. For it means for everything Allah created. And Nabi al A'zam sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is a mercy. And that's where Hassan bin Thabit radiallahu anhu comes and he says, Alam tara anna Allah arsal abdahu birisa bi kalamihi wa Allahu a'ala wa amjadu. أغر عليه من النبوة خاتم من الله من نور يلوح ويشهد وضم الإله اسم النبي إلى اسمه إذ قال في الخمس المؤذن أشهد وشق له من اسمه ليجله فذو العرش محموم محمود وهذا محمد. It means haven't you seen that Allah sent his his worshiper with his risala? Agarron, he has this nur and the seal of prophecy on him. Min Allah, from Allah, from nur that is shining to bring light to the souls and to bring light to the believers where the hearts of the believers look up to him and aspire and are gravitated by the snoo to the muhabba of him and then to the muhabba of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa shakka lahu na wa dhamma al-ilah and then Allah put the name of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam next to his name when every time, five times every day when the mu'addin says ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna محمدا رسول الله وضم الإله اسم النبي إلى اسمه إذ قال في الخمس المؤذن أشهد وشق له من اسمه ليجله not only that but he gave him a name Allah gave the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم a name from his name stemmed from his name ها فذو العرش محمود Allah his name is Al Mahmud وهذا محمد and the Muhammad is also comes like that from Al Mahmud in a sense that both of them are praised of course no comparison because was one is the creator and the other is the creation but he is the best of the creation صلى الله تعالى and therefore, that sort of leads us then to the entry of the new phase after the birth of the Prophet ﷺ, to the phase of his announcement of the da'wah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to talk about that next time. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama salaita ala Ibrahim wa ala Ibrahim barak ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ibrahim fil alameen inna ka hamidun majid. Allahumma nsuri al-Islam wa al-Muslimin يا مولانا كلمة الحق والدين اللهم من أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين خيرا فوفقه إليه من أراد بهم غير ذلك فجعل دائرة السوء عليه اللهم رد المسلمين إلى دينك ردا جميلا آتي أنفسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها مولاها اشف لهم مرضانا وعاف مبتلانا فك أسرانا ورحم موتانا اغفر لهم لنا ولآبائنا ولمشايخنا ولمن له حق علينا ولمن على الخير أعاننا وعن الشر أبعدنا ولمن أوصانا بالدعاء وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وآله أقم الصلاة